Hello everybody, welcome to the second presentation of the series of lectures of the Ecology for Freshmen. This is the second presentation and we're still in introduction talking about main objectives and objects of the ecology as a science. In the next slide, we're going to recapitulate everything we talked about earlier and um, this is what we're going to do probably in every presentation because I believe the best way to learn something is to repeat it as many times as possible. The knowledge get really firm and then get stuck in your head better. So to recapitulate, first we talked in the previous presentation of the goals and objects of the research of the ecology as a science. We said it, it deals with interactions in the nature, so between uh, living creatures or living creatures and their surrounding or abiot in, in, in few words. Then we talked about important people for development of the ecology and its history. We named named these three men, Hippocrates, Levin, Hook and Haeckel, which who was founder. Of course there are other people in history of ecology, but we mentioned only these three ones as, as crucial. And then we said that ecology actually developed in the way we know it today, only in the 20th century. Today it's mostly recognized through environmental protection praxis. And we also mentioned that depending on the, on the, uh, the object, object of the research, there are different branches of the ecology. So you have ecology of birds and ecosystem and so on. But then you have some other divisions of the ecology dependent on its objectives, and this is what we're going to talk about today. Ecology also can be de uh, divided by, uh, the, by the complexity of its object of research. So on, on the right side of the screen, you can see the levels of organizations of, of biological systems. So from organisms to biosphere, different levels of organizations through its complexity. Uh, this is a, a nice picture drawn for all these levels of organization. And we're going to talk about every and each one of them through next slides to explain what they are and why are they named uh, the way they are. Firstly, the individual. So you have a single organism of a single species. This is not really what ecology works on. It's, it's still in the domain of biological sciences, but it can be it can be investigated through some other researches. For example, this oath ecology is a branch of the ecology that deals with the uh, relationships between a single organism towards something else, so towards in uh, towards other individual or most commonly or complex groups, so like community and so on. But as I mentioned, it's not really what ecology works on, it's still in the domain of biological science. Next is population. You can see in the right cor up corner the tiny pictures. It's easy to understand if you, rem if you remember it like that. So population is a group of individuals of the same species. But what it is important is that they live in the same time, in the same area. So, it is defined like deer population in Russian tundra in the last decade. That will be a, a proper definition of a population. Firstly, name population was used only for people, as I mentioned, the ecology only developed in the 20th century, but if you, can, if you can put it as a name for a group of one species as Homo sapiens, it's logical that it can be used for any other other species. That's how that's why we use the word population for group of individuals of a single species, or maybe a lower tax like subspecies. Depending on the on what part of, of, of population it works on, you have different types of ecology, so sub branches of ecology and science. It's named with starts, but what it actually says here is that Population as um, population as entity has its uh, its progresses, its developments and, and declines. So as its processes, call it like that. Depending on, on which of the processes you are looking at, as a ecologist, 
you will get the, the population dynamics information or density or genetics of population distribution and so on so there are many many levels through which you can look the population as an organization of, of organisms next in complexity so more complex the population you have community or biokinosis which we're gonna mention a bit later community would be a group of different populations so you have a population of, of deer populations of rabbits populations of fox you put them together, you will get the community of the area, so area of tundra, Russian tundra, for example. It is logical, so you understand the, the complexity of, of organizations. What I want to just a bit out of context, reminder is that all these names and the, the levels of organizations are kind of artificial, because they do know they exist, those systems, they, they function the way they do, but they are not aware of, of, of their group they are they are part of. They are, they are not aware of the boundaries we as, as the people put for them. So they are not going to say, Oh, I live so on this area, I cannot move to the other one because this is not my area of my species and my community. It's all put artificially and only to, uh, to help us have a more systematic approach to it since ecology is a natural science and it really needs things to be really clear and strict and, and organized well. So it's easier to, to uh, investigate. But it's it's not so simple and clean and clear in nature. Similar way of thinking would be, for example, with the world seas and oceans. But when you look at the, the, the figure of Earth, you will see that there is only a water mass on the, on the, on the planet. So one ocean. All these tiny divisions with seas and oceans, it are put there artificially, so it's easier for us as, as people to get around that huge area. That's the similar idea. About biokinosis. Community is mostly mostly used and accepted, but some people believe biokinosis is more biological slash ecological term, since community would be uh, just a group of animals, but biokinosis would explain that they are actually in some kind of relationship. You know, community would be a community of uh, different animals in the zoo, but they really do not have anything in to do with each other. On the other hand, biokinesis includes the interactions between those different populations. So depending on what populations we talk about, so you have zookinosis or phytokinosis or microbiokinosis in whatever you you take as a as a true one the community or biokinesis term it is still kind of blurry the that that level of organization so the boundaries are not really clear it's not really strictly uh, organized and and put in the box in the frame so there are some theories how to define how the community as a system works and and, and exists so you have this holistic theory, which is a theory of superorganism, telling that populations on their own have their own habits and, and conditions that when they are put together, they are, or they are for forming one completely new organism called superorganism, because of its size, but so actually put all of them together and you will get a completely new organism with their own habits and, and goals and, and uh, needs and so on. So holistic theory would say that community as a level organization has completely new specifics compared to, to populations, as I said before, that community is only a group of population. On the other hand, you have individualistic theory saying that every community only depends on a group of populations it is made of. Exactly the same community with a number of type of species they are within, but they are not going to be the same because different populations of different individuals so on are part of it. So they are defining uh, the habits of community population determined, basically opposite from holistic theory. And then you have neutral, uh, neutral theory which would be that, which would say that only interactions within community explains their habit, the behavior, and when we say interactions, they mean only 
those completely natural processes of single populations. So the population dynamics and, and patterns of distributions and so on we talked about. So non-dependent of abiotic factors, but only what happens within the, the, the community and populations. I hope I'm not talking too complex for you guys. Hope you understand. And now about the biotop. Biotop is what we saw about community biochemistry is the same here because it could be the same as habitat but biotop is something that includes the species they live in so habitat would be just a specific physical ground you know geographical area but then biotop includes those ecological processes and why think some species or populations live exactly exactly there that's the, the, it's kind of more biological approach to idea of habit. Yes, next in the level organization is our superstar, it's ecosystem. Uh, why I say ecosystem is a superstar of the ecology? Because I like to believe, and it's not only me, that ecosystem is actually the main objective of the, res of the ecological researchers. And why is that? Because it is defined as biota plus abiota in the area, functioning as a system. If you, remember, if you maybe remember from the first presentation, this is what I basically said about the college is a science, what it works on. So it works on, on uh, processes in the nature between biological and abiological, or biological and biological, but it's more common between biological and abiological systems, but all put together and work as a system. So it, where ecosystem is just a single unit of a research of the ecology as a science. So here we can talk about, as I mentioned, the new energy and nutrient cycles and flows. So you have food chains and so on. We're going to talk about it later. But every single individual on whatever level of organization up to ecosystem has its own role in that system and functions the way it is. Every tree species and, and uh, every bird, lizard and a mammal and so on Whatever there is, there is for a reason, and it's adapted to the area that it lives in. But also, on the other hand, it adapted its surrounding or its needs. This is a nice picture of uh, explaining the, the idea of the eco ecosystem. So it's a pretty usually large area, uh, including everything live and not live in that area that are a part of that system functioning the way it is. It doesn't have to be a big, though, ecosystems. It can be just specific, pretty specific from its surroundings, so it can be ecosystem on its own, even though it's not so large in the in the. Then we have biomes. Biomes are basically the groups of ecosystems. We usually talk about large areas. We're gonna talk about biomes, biomes more in the next videos. But the idea of biome is that in a specific geographical area specific uh, climate conditions are present and then as a response to them dif different types of life developed in the area so you know you have different biomes as I said before here so you have uh, deserts and tundras and tro tropical rains so in the desert you will have camels you won't have camels living in Arctic, because that's exactly the interactions I talked about. So organisms develop as a response to, to surrounding conditions, but also conditions can be changed towards the needs of the, the, uh, the living creatures living in that area. Uh, if you remember in the first presentation, I talk about the existence of uh, oxygen on this planet. That's the, the same story. Here you say, it says that the uh, biomes are usually defined by rainfall and temperature and you would agree that those are the main usually conditions of climate condition. But as much as they are mostly taken as large areas, as I said, groups of ecosystems, I also said they don't have to be so large. It only needs to have a specific specifics so it can be divided from the surrounding and taken as, a, as an entity on its own. So then you have microbiome, and a good example for it is a human microbiome. Human microbiome is a biome including microorganisms of human skin. 
there you go. It's really clearly de uh, divided from its surroundings and from air and, and the muscles and whatever is under the skin. And it has its populations of different species and so on. So there is a nice example of a micro bio micro, of course, because it's in the in the scale of micro size. The next slide, last but not the least, is biosphere. General idea is that biosphere represents all the life on Earth. It is pretty clear in the level of organizations, the system functioning has pretty well established boundaries between its surroundings and the rest. So it goes only into some level of depth in the earth and it is, it is uh, divided from the surroundings so it's um, space. It is only a part of a system that makes the earth the way it is. So again ecology talking about interactions of a system that works well. So here you have lithosphere, a hydrosphere, an atmosphere and those, like, those four parts are making the system working well system of earth. Biosphere is kind of self-sustaining except the heat and, 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 and the waves from the sun, other waves from the sun and from the, the space, which are, you will agree, the crucial points of survival on earth. So as much as we think it is self-sustaining, it's not, it's not completely. So like any other level of lower level organization we mentioned before it is dependent on its surrounding and it's on a on a higher level of organization it needs interactions between those parts of a bigger and more complex system to function okay that's it for today thanks for listening see you next time